Tesla recently smashed it out of the ballpark, delivering 185,000 vehicles in the first quarter of the year. The stock jumped on the surprise news and has been inching its way higher from the low $600 range. The analyst had been expecting much lower results, with most estimates ranging from 160,000 vehicles all the way to 178,000. Now the backdrop was fairly negative. We have a semiconductor shortage, which has been affecting other automakers who have been shutting down their own plants. However, Tesla managed to sneak through unscathed. Or did they? Perhaps the results could have been better if they were able to get all of the chips that they needed. Tesla managed to produce such great results without producing any Model S or X vehicles. It's possible that because these premium vehicles have more bells and whistles, they have two screens for instance compared to one in the Model 3 or Y, it's possible that Tesla diverted the resources to sell more 3 and Y only. Secondly, the first quarter is always seasonally weak for Tesla. For the past couple years, there's been a significant drop in deliveries when going from the holiday fourth quarter, where there's always a big end of year push, to the first quarter of the year, where you have the Chinese New Year celebration and people taking time off in China, where half of Tesla's production is located. Tesla's stock had actually been beaten down from a high of $900 per share all the way down to the $500 range leading up to the quarter. So putting all these things together, it was actually a perfect setup for giving the stock a bit of a boost on a delivery beat. There were these large negative trends and the analyst estimates were subdued. Even Gene Munster, very bullish analyst on Tesla, said this. Uh, the street is looking for 174,000 vehicles versus 181,000 in the December quarter. Spoiler alert, we think that they will miss those numbers. We think it's going to be closer to 160,000 vehicles. Now, while it wasn't easy for Tesla to blow away deliveries, the low expectations is ultimately what helped to send the stock a little bit higher. Even the most bullish of analysts, YouTubers, etc., saw the writing on the wall and thought that Tesla's deliveries could have come in a lot lower than the actual estimates. And so what I'm trying to emphasize is the great numbers combined with the low expectations is the formula for a higher stock price. Even Tesla perma bear Gordon Johnson purposely put his estimates at 189,000 vehicles, a number that he didn't think Tesla could even come close to, to raise expectations and then talk about how Tesla missed his earnings numbers. However, after the delivery numbers came out, investors immediately became extremely bullish on Tesla stock, calling for an increase in two, three, four times the current price based on the delivery numbers. Investors are now expecting blowout earnings results when Tesla reports their Q1 results later this month since the vehicle deliveries were at an all-time record. However, in terms of automotive, this is probably not going to be the case, and investors are now setting Tesla up for disappointment with their ultra-high expectations. Let's briefly look at estimating Tesla's revenue for the upcoming quarterly results and some key trends that can influence their earnings. Before we begin, please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of our upcoming Tesla videos, content, and research. We'd super appreciate your support by following us. Also, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, check out our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data for every stock going back nine years, and it's all freely available. So I'm starting by looking at last quarter, Q4, and pulling out the automotive revenue, and we're going to try and estimate the revenue for the first quarter of this year. We know the approximate mix of vehicles based on the numbers that Tesla has given us. I'm not differentiating between selling the Model S and X or 3 versus a Y, but we can discuss that later. Tesla sold 180,000 cars in Q4 of last year and almost 185,000 in Q1 this year. Tesla also gives the percentages of the vehicles that are leased, so I've gone ahead and converted those into the number of vehicles that have been leased, and these are included in the totals. Finally, Tesla stated that from their automotive revenue, $401 million came from tax credits, or rather emissions credits. So what I'd like to do is estimate the average price of a Model 3 or Y from last quarter, and I want to use that price for this quarter. I know Tesla's reduced the price a number of times and even raised it close to the end of the quarter, but this is just an estimate. So in order to do that, I've guessed that a Model S and X sells for approximately $100,000 on average. I can put this spreadsheet on our Patreon, patreon.com slash the market is open if you're interested and you can play around with the numbers. So what I've done is I want to know only the amount of revenue that comes from Model 3 and Y since those were the majority of the vehicles sold this quarter. So I've taken the total revenue, I've backed out the, the credits, which are emissions credits, and then I've subtracted all of the non-leased Model S and Xs, assuming that they cost $100,000 each. 
I don't need to look at anything leased here since that's already separated out in the revenue. Again, you can look at the spreadsheet on Patreon to see the exact calculations. So basically I'm left with the total revenue earned on just non-leased model 3 and Y. Now I just need to divide it by the number of 3s and Ys that were delivered last quarter, which is 161,000 minus the 11,000 leased ones, and I get an average price of around $46,000. So now I'm going to work backwards to calculate the revenue from this current quarter using the price of the Model 3 and Y that I got. To do that, I just multiply the 46,000 by 182,000 vehicles sold minus the 12,700 that were leased because I don't want to count leased vehicles. I'll also add in the 2,000 Model S and X that were sold this quarter, and then I'll assume the emissions credits are going to show up again at around 400 million. I think they might be lower, but we don't exactly know for sure yet. And so I get about $8.4 billion in automotive revenue. And when I add in about the same amount of leased vehicles as last time, a total of $8.7 billion, which is lower than the $9.3 billion from last quarter. Now you can play around with some of these numbers, like the emissions credits and the price estimates that I used, but it's important to note that just because Tesla sold more vehicles this quarter, they sold mainly the cheaper Model 3 and Ys. So I don't think that they can possibly have a revenue beat just from the automotive division in this case. Maybe the energy division could help, but we're looking at automotive only here, which is the largest part of Tesla's business. And this makes sense because when you replace high priced, high margin Model S and X vehicles, about 19,000 of them from last quarter, with lower priced Model 3s and Ys, you need to sell way more of those lower priced ones to get the same amount of revenue. If they're half the price, then you need to sell twice as many to make the same amount of money. I don't think people realize how Model S and X are still important revenue contributors and for margin as well. I think it's fair to say that the margin on S and X is also higher than the Model 3 and Y since they're higher priced luxury vehicles. So I think it's important to lower expectations because I think they've gotten quickly out of hand. Here are more of my estimates for Q1. I don't want to go over every line, just some important factors. The energy division could do well, but I think Tesla is still spending like crazy on ramping up solar roof, which is still very low volume, and that could hurt energy costs. And as I said, I don't think we'll see higher automotive margins than we did in Q4 because of the Model S and X being almost non-existent this quarter. I do think they may partially be offset by more made in China Model Ys, which are supposed to have great margins compared to the Model 3. Keep in mind that Tesla is still in the middle of building two gigafactories at once and they're spending like crazy. It looks like Tesla is hiring a ton of people. Elon Musk has been tweeting about getting more people to work at Tesla in Texas and Giga Berlin. And so last quarter we saw a massive spike in R&D and I expect this will continue. They also continue to sell more and more vehicles which will require more people delivering them, more equipment, etc. At least until Teslas can deliver themselves. The point is that I think it will be a tough quarter from an earnings perspective as Tesla spends like crazy to ramp up these initiatives. Last quarter, Tesla earned 80 cents per share and this quarter the forecast is for 76 cents per share. I think without Model S and X driving significantly higher margins, Tesla's earnings should come in lower than the analysts actually expect. Now this said, there's a quote from US economist Clayton Christensen from his book The Innovator Solution who says that innovators should be patient for growth and impatient for profits. And of course for many companies this makes sense, as some scale too quickly and don't have the profits to keep funding their businesses. However, I've sort of flipped this around and said be patient for profits but not for growth, and that seems to be more what Tesla is doing here, and they're ripping a page right out of Amazon's book. By spending as much as they can in order to grow quickly and gain as much market share as possible, once they have the market share, not only will reduced spending lead to increased profits, but it will play right into their business model by offering additional services and products to a larger customer base and also pushing away competitors who are too slow to catch up. Tesla could be extremely profitable today if they wanted to. They would just stop spending, not hire any new employees, stop putting up new gigafactories, not build out superchargers and service, and live off a small number of vehicles. However, Elon Musk has set out a vision for Tesla to shift the whole world to electric vehicles as fast as possible, and in doing so, they may not be ultra profitable today, but they are setting themselves up to have a much stronger business in the future. Consider that the legacy automakers are extremely profitable today, but are scared to invest heavily enough into EVs such that it destroys their juicy profits, and as a result, they will likely be market share laggers when the world has shifted to EVs. So I still think that Tesla is constantly setting themselves up for the next year or the next quarter. 
each upcoming quarter should be more exciting than the previous one because they continue to invest heavily and build out their infrastructure. In the second quarter, we should start seeing the new Plaid Model S's and X's hit the road as new production ramps up, which will not only boost the number of cars Tesla can deliver and create great word of mouth for their new set of supercars, but this will also add back the high-priced vehicles to their revenue and margins. We may see signs of a chip shortage recovery, and now that we're out of the first quarter, what Gene Munster called a mess in the first quarter will now be a tailwind, as he says, and will help Tesla out in the following quarters. We should see Tesla continuing to add capacity. At the beginning of this year, they had 1,050,000 of installed vehicle capacity. Clearly, the 100,000 Model S and X wasn't used, and so if you back that out, Tesla was operating at about 75% capacity. I think that Tesla is still on track to do a million deliveries this year if they can get production closer to the installed capacity, something that Elon Musk said in the Q1 update letter that was happening in China. And in the second half of the year, it's expected that Giga Berlin and Texas will be in the early stages of ramping up. This could give a large boost in the back half of the year, and I think that with solid first quarter deliveries that we've seen, the following three quarters could look something like this, where Tesla averages 250,000 cars per quarter, and anything below that in the first two quarters can be made up in the second half. The moral of the story is, lower your expectations for profitability as Tesla invests heavily in the company to expand market share and reap the benefits in the out years. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button on this video, we'd super appreciate that. And subscribe to our channel for more Tesla content. You can support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.